left off last time. I can't remember where it was. But you all know the policeman's oath. Yeah. I do solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve the Queen in the office of constable with fairness, integrity, diligence and impartiality, upholding the fundamental human rights and according to e according equal, equal respect to all people and that I will to the best of my power cause peace to be kept and preserved and prevent all offences against people and property and that while I continue though to hold a said office I will to the best of my skill and knowledge discharge all the duties thereof faithfully according to law. Keep the peace. Yeah. My name all capital letters. <coughs> Notice of intended prosecution. Vehicle registration number. In accordance with section 1 of the Road Traffic Offenders Act 1988, I hereby give you notice that it is intended to take proceedings against the driver of a motor vehicle, Renault Brackets, France, for the alleged offence exceeding the 30 mile an hour limit at 38 miles an hour at whatever time in January this year in at a place in North Wales, Valley, Gwynedd. Please to be completed in block capitals by the addressee only. Were you the driver at the time of defence? Yes or no. Are your details above correct? Yes or no. Uh, was your Licence issued by the DVLA, NI or EU licence or other. And then you want the driver number, the date of birth. Don't know whether they want the date of birth of the driver, uh, the licence or the man who's got the licence, no idea. Um, and then it's all got to be filled in in capital letters, which you all know. Um, and they ask for, along with that, was another document saying, um, giving me three choices. You can apply, beg, for three points and a fixed penalty, a fixed penalty and a driving awareness day, which is under no quid, or you can go to court, do not pass go, do not collect £200. I wouldn't apply for any of them. I open this letter because I am the authorised rep representative, principal creditor of that legal person, which you probably all know about. Anybody not know about it yet? You all know about it, okay. Um, so they, they sent that letter twice on two different occasions uh, to me. I would say, well, that's the 2nd of February, that one, and probably another two weeks later. I'm not applying, begging for any of those things. So, the 8th of May, two policy enforcers came to me home with this document. And it says, final notice, important, seven days to respond. A notice of intended prosecution was sent to you and our records show that you have failed to furnish information concerning the driver or person with information that will lead to the driver. The reduction of road casualties is recognised by central government, the courts and in the wider community to be a proper police objective. The North Wales Police are committed, go away, are they? It should be bloody committed. <laughs> <laughs> to reducing casualties and camera enforcement forms part of our strategy in this important area. Our policy is to follow up all infringements. You have a seven day period from the date of this letter to retain the information by completing the reverse form and return it to the above address or the matter will be referred directly to the Magistrates Court. Do not pass go, do not collect on 200 quid. If you sold the vehicle, it's your legal obligation to notify us, blah, blah, blah. We should remind you that upon conviction for failing to finish offence of the maximum fine is £1,000 accompanied by six penalty points. The registered keeper or person believed to have information concerning the driver will be sentenced on the same basis as if she were the driver. It's also important to note that in certain circumstances, a driver may be denied the opportunity to pay a lower fixed penalty by failing to comply. Right. Right, okay. 
this is my letter then to um, North Wales Police, Central Ticket Office. Read notice number blah blah blah. This is a notice of your notice. Dear whoever you are, I notice your notice which I blah 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 of the family such and such accepted on behalf of Mr. Blah blah, the legal fiction corporation which I did it of the family such and such am the principal credit of. I receive your notice on behalf of the person by a police officer who identified himself as Sergeant did it. Ah, the name is not the same as a bit later on, but we'll go there in a minute. For Merseyside Police, I made them aware that I am the man, not the legal fiction, on the notice, and I accepted the notice of that person. The information you require, I'm unable to furnish you with. I will, within 14 days of this letter, respond to full in full to the corporation business you are an employee of. Another letter back of them later, and it says, Mr. Dave of the <coughs> Jones, <coughs> Jones family now. I'm not Dave Jones, I'm now Dave Jones, Jones, Jones. Right, okay. Um, thank you for the letter dated 9th of May, the concerts of which have been noted. If you would wish to supply this office with any additional information, it's requested that it's received by the Central Ticket Office no later than a month later. After this date, the file will automatically be passed to the evidence assessors for consideration for offence for failing to furnish driver information. Right, okay. Then I got a uh, letter from the court saying, please come to court. Um, so I turned up to the court, uh, the magistrate's court in Bolgetley, and um, there was a very pretty lady. Um, sitting there, who was the court clerk, and uh, so before we go any further, can I ask you a few questions? You can ask the magistrates when they come in, will you approach the bench and said, no, I'm not getting on your ship. So I stayed in the public <laughs> So she said, well, okay, we'll, we'll, anyway, she disappeared, and the next thing is, a buzzer goes, and three magicians, magistrates, come out. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, I'm already standing, please stand, so I'm already standing. <coughs> um, right, I understand you've got questions. Yeah. Do you recognise the Bill of Rights since 1688? Do you uphold it? Do you practice it? And do you observe all my rights under this? Silence. Declaration of Human Rights and Freedoms, 1948. Do you recognise that? Silence. The other one, next one, uh, the Bill of, not Bill of Rights, what is it? The Indigenous, Indigenous Peoples' Rights, Declaration of Indigenous Peoples' Rights. No. In the silence. Didn't acknowledge any of them. Right? And uh, said so the, the court clerk, I've actually, oh, better not say that. It's on tape. Um, the court clerk then said, um, Are you Mr. Dave? Jones. And I said, no, I'm Dave of the Jones family. Names have been altered, by the way. And she then said, are you Mr. David Jones? And I said, no, I'm David of the Jones family. And she said, well, your worship, as she turned to the center, the middle magician, um, it seems as though we can't get, um, we can't identify this person. I think we should um, put a plea of not guilty in and adjourn it. At which point I said, are you my power of attorney? She said, no. I said, are you standing on your oath of office at this time? Silence. Are you standing on your oath of office at this time? Well, we've all been sworn in. I suggest your worship, we adjourn the case and put a plea of not guilty in. At that point, I, he said, right, I'm adjourning the case, put a plea of not guilty in. I said, are you my power of attorney? He said, I am the power in this court. Adjourned. Adjourned. So 9-11, bang. <laughs> right. I, I don't know whether any of you have, you, have you all heard this story before? Right, okay. So, <coughs> I then said, right, okay, somebody please ring the police, because perjury, treason, and misconduct in public office seems to be getting done here. So my friend who's got a phone, 999, 
past the phone, send an officer over here, there's somebody impersonating the magistrate, treason, possibly perjury, and misconduct in public office. So, at that point, they all got up and they all, sh and I mean, he should, have, he should have been in the Olympics, he'd have won something. They ran into their little chambers, and then I sat down and I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And the court she come in, he said, can you get out please? And I said, no, I'm waiting for the police. <clears throat> he said, no, but you've got to get out. I said, no, I'm waiting for the police. They've committed what I think is a crime, or three crimes, misconduct in public office, treason, perjury. And violated my rights. So, anyway, um, after about 20 minutes, no, no, 10 minutes, the security guy came in, you know, the gas fitter. G4S. Mm, G4S, that's right. Yeah. Right, so the gas fitter came in, he said, you're going to have to leave the court. I said, I'm not leaving anything, I'm waiting for the police. And he went, mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm waiting for the police, because he said, but there's other people waiting to be done. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, you can piss off, I'm waiting here. Right, so... Um, Anyway, after about 20 minutes and talking to my friend and all that, I said, well, oh, oh that's right, the, um, the court usher then sent everybody home. So there was no business conducted further at that point. Oh, that's because you had some other people then. Yeah. Well, that, that was the point, that was the point. She said, I am not allowing them criminals, what I consider to be, um, to uh, eat, eat away at these poor innocent people who have no idea who they are, what rights they've got, mm. and what's going on in this, what I consider, criminal establishment. Mm -hmm. So, after about 20 minutes, I thought, well, there's no point, I need to go out and have a cigarette. <coughs> so I went out and had a cigarette, and um, a policeman turned up. Anyway, I think he got the names, I have no idea. But I filled in a witness sta statement, oh, excuse me, that's an order. Filled in a witness statement, at the Dalgetry Police Station, which is there. Um, and that was that. And a week later, I said, what's happening? He said, um, nothing. It's been sent, it got took out of my hands, and it's been passed back to the court. <laughs> right, so anyway, um, date, date of view hearing 9-11. 9-11. But on a good chapman was with me. It's quite good cool for actually. Yeah. <coughs> so the second time I turned up at court, um, this time it was Carnarvon Court, and there was, a, I assume, a district judge. He may have been a judge. Priest. Well, whatever he was, <laughs> he was circumambulating the bench. Ooh. Now, for those who don't know what circumambulating is, I suggest you get a Masonic dictionary out and have a look. Right? <laughs> circumambulating. Circum as in, you know, yeah. circum. Uh, mambulating. It's in any Masonic dictionary online, you'll find out what it is. Yeah. Tell us, Dave. He was surveying, travelling, from west to east, trying to find the light. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, so 11th of September turns up. I've got three witnesses with me this time, and uh, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. Right. Uh, this this was part of uh, my defence, if you like. To the clerk of justices, this statement is presented on behalf of the natural person and legal person who is entitled to employ the legal identity of Dave Jones. This does not imply that specifically, thank you Rob, I'll sub most of this, but anyway, this does not apply, uh, imply that specifically the person of David as a natural person is obligated under any binding agreement, treaty, convention, law or regulation to adopt the legal identity, except under screen, extreme situations where I have caused to exercise my fundamental freedoms of human rights, blah, blah, blah. And it goes on for quite some time. There's, I think, three pages of it. I think there's three pages of it. 
Well, I think there's <coughs> actually there might be four pages of it. There's four pages at that. That's arms then, not a subject. Right. Said that 35 posts to them. That's before I actually got into the court uh, on 9-11. So I was expecting a bit of a battle. Especially when it turned out to be a judge. Well, I assumed him to be a judge. A but when he was circumambulating, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, he then said to me, are you David Jones? I said, no, I'm David the Jones family. Names have been changed. He said, are you Mr. David Jones? I said, no, I'm David of the Jones family. And he said, get out of my court. You have no business here. You're free to go. Oh, well, that fact he says you're free to go, that's interesting. I went. And I turned to my right and Veronica, was. she went. I went. And he said, get out of my court, you've no business here, go. So two gas fitters come along and pushed us out. And as we, as we got through the double doors, he said, I'm putting an arrest warrant out for Mr. David, Mr. David Jones. That's fine, it's not you. And I thought, I got out and I sat down, I've had enough of this. I'm ringing the police again. So the police wouldn't come. They said... According to Kerry at the call centre, and I've got a number here, right, because she's implicated as well, she made a legal determination that it was a civil matter. <coughs> that's what she said. She said, no, that's not criminal, that's civil. No, 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 we're not coming. So, we went down to the police station. And a sergeant, oh, oh, sorry, a PC. Can I say names? Why is the same names at this stage? Takes some white snow if you want. Yeah. Um, there you go, that's it, right. You call, anyway, he came, he came down after about half an hour. And he went, no, don't want to speak to you. I'm not speaking to you. No, absolutely not. Now, this is in front of three witnesses. Right, so back this up. No, not interested. I said, I, I want to put, no, I'm. I'm not taking any complaints, not taking any statements, not interested. I've been asked to give you that from the court. And it says new hearing date. <coughs> uh, PC, whatever it is, from Carnarvon's letter again, two days later. And it says, I'm writing to inform you that the above hearing, the court issued a warrant with bail for your arrest. On arrest by police, you will be remanded on bail to attend court on the 9th of October, Tuesday on, at 12 noon. Please note that the trial may proceed in your absence and you may be committing an imprisonable offence should you fail to attend the court on the next occasion. I got that. I went, the hell's all this about, you know? So I, I got home, it was, it was on the, the mat on Thursday night when I got home, it was about 8 o'clock when I got home. What the hell's all that about? So, I ring them in the morning, so I rang the court the next morning and spoke to somebody called Mark, I won't say his surname, and I said, case number blah 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 blah, I've got a letter here saying that there is an arrest warrant out for Mr. David Jones, what the hell's going on? Why is the arrest warrant out? She said, I was in court on Tuesday and the judge told me to get out, I had no business there. On two occasions in front of three witnesses. <laughs> is that the dog? That's okay. <laughs> I thought somebody had terrible wind in the back there. Um, and, and, and this chap called Mark on the phone said, it's not a live warrant. I said, what do you mean it's not a live warrant? <coughs> he said, well, it's only if you don't turn up on the next, the next time. The, the warrant then becomes live and you will be arrested, blah, blah, blah. I said, so don't need to worry about having a few drinks tonight, and, you know, because I don't want to be dragged out of my bed at 3 o'clock in the morning after I've had a few gills 
and then saying something that I may regret later. No, 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 it's not live. Okay, all right, fine. So I read it again, and I read it again, and I read it again. I thought, that doesn't smell right there. That does not smell right at all. I'm going along to the local police station, Marsh Lane. <coughs> so at Marsh Lane, I passed the letter to the girl, and hang on a sec, I'll go and get somebody. Uh, I explained to her that I was at the court, and the judge, and he said, you've got no business here, get out, and all the rest of it. With my three witnesses, and one which was standing next to me at the police station, by the way. <coughs> a constable come out the side door about ten minutes later, and he said, Mr. Jones, and I said, no. He said, I am commonly known as da 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 And he said, what's your date of birth? I said, I haven't got a clue. It's that long ago. You know? And he said, well, I said, I don't know. I said, both of my parents are dead. So anything I say is hearsay, because it can't be verified. Blah, blah, blah. And um, he said, well, <coughs> I said allegedly, and I told him the date of death, right, allegedly. And he said, well, the warrant is live, and I'm going to have to arrest you. And I told him what had happened at the court, so this off-policy enforcer, just doing his job. I said, before you arrest me, I want to record it. Okay, fine. And it's on my phone, the whole back of, you know, it's there. And, um, I said, I want you to note that anything I say or do after you've arrested me is under duress. Yeah, okay. Okay, fire away. So we recorded the arrest. Right, you don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so. Anything you want to learn that there. Do you have got anything to say? He said, no comment. He said, okay. Um, do you want to come with me? I said, yeah. So where's the handcuffs? Oh no, no, you can't. You come on your own, Steve. I'm not, you seem like a reasonable guy. I said, okay, fine, all right. So we got on the back of the van. I said, can I talk off the record? He said, yeah. I said, how long have you been doing your job? He said, 15 years. I said, 15 years, eh? Hmm. Have you worked anywhere else before? He said, yeah, I used to work in the station a bit further down the road. I said, oh, I've got a mate who worked there. Nicky's heard this. Don't go away. You're going to love the end of it. <laughs> so, um, I said, I've got a mate works there, you know, so I told him his badge number, and he said, yeah, yeah, Pete, I know him very well, yeah, brilliant, mate, mate of mine, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, if you ring Pete up, you'll find out that I am not a criminal. I've never been in trouble in my life with police for anything. So I might have had a couple of speeding tickets and all that nonsense, but I'm a peaceful man. He said, I've seen that on the record. So he's obviously looked up my record before the arrest. And I said, um, so, do you remember your police oath? And he said, 15 years ago. <laughs> I said, well, <clears throat> I'll just remind you of it now. <clears throat> Part of your oath was to uphold, uphold all fundamental human rights and protect the people. He said, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I said, well, do you know what my fundamental human rights are? He said, no. It is too wrong. Which I found very disturbing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And I said, well, let me tell you right now, Constable, you are violating them. You have made a legal determination that a judge in Carnarvon Court would not make. He recognised that I was the man and not a piece of paper laid legal fiction. You have just made a legal determination that I am the legal person, and I'm not. So I suggest you be very, very careful what you do from now on. And I said, and that's all I've got to say on the matter. So I'm just doing my job. Go ahead and do your job. So I went into the custody suite, went in front of the sergeant, and he said, okay, name. I said, no comment. He said, look, we can either do it, we can do it two ways. You can do it the hard way or the easy way. If you want the easy way, you'll comply. If you want the hard way, I'll stick it in a cell till Monday morning and I'll have you up in front of a judge and let him decide what he's going to do with you. Or you can 
do it my way, and you can give us the details, and you'll be out in half an hour. I said, I'm not trying to be awkward, I'm just trying to stick up for myself. He said, you are trying to be awkward. What's your name? And the policeman who arrested me said, David Jones. And I went, okay, carry on. What's your date of birth? And he'd written it down on his hand, and he said, 19th of the 5th, 1987. <laughs> yes, right. I told you, names and dates and all that have been changed. I'm not telling you my dates and dates. I had a bit of milk round, alright. So, um, so anyway, I, I do believe, I mean I'm not legally trained, but I do believe he's just took power of attorney over me. And I went, oh, you shouldn't have done that mate. <laughs> But anyway, this, that, the other. Half an hour later, I got let out, really released on bail. Right, and I have a charge sheet here, and it says, You are charged with the offence shown below. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention it now. Something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do, do say may be given in evidence. <coughs> number one, arrest on warrant number blah 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 issued by Carnarvon Magistrates on the 11th of September for failing to appear for road traffic offences. Mm -hmm. It's all here folks, you can all read it by all means. So whatever, I had a little bit of toss around with yes. me, the letter that did send to the solicitor of the court, which was back in August. In response to your letter dated the 30th of August informing of the new date and time place for hearing, I respectfully bring to your attention the Bill of Rights 1688 Chapter 2, 1, Will and Mar Session 2. I notice that in this act under the grants and forfeitures, all grants and promises of fines and forfeitures of particular persons' property before convictions are illegal and void. Uh, void. Blah, blah, blah. I won't bother going through, through it, uh, uh, any more of that. Because let's get to the meat and bones now. Um, so, I was supposed to appear at, um, according to this charge sheet, at 10 o'clock. And according to the court paperwork, I was supposed to turn up at 12 noon. If I'd have turned up at 12 noon, they had the right at 10 o'clock to hear the, hear the case because the sergeant behind the desk said, no, it's 10 o'clock. If you appear at 12 noon, they may have heard your case, in which case they will put a prison sentence on you or can put a prison sentence on you. So turn up at 10 o'clock, although on the court paperwork it says 12 o'clock. It doesn't say 12 o'clock, it says 12 noon. Bit of still skull W going on there, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, given in mind all the paperwork that I've put in and letters I've written and I'm Dave, Dave of the Jones family, uh, I'm being totally ignored. I thought, right, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to take... So I went to the, re the, the registry office, got a copy of the birth certificate fiction, which cost me 10 quid. <coughs> Um, and I put it in an envelope along with my person's driving license and I drove to Carnarvon Court on Tuesday, hang on, what day are we? Wednesday. Last Tuesday. <coughs> not, this, not yesterday, last Tuesday. So I drove there last Tuesday. And it says, two o'clock, it just enclosed is the legal person legal fiction in brackets, Mr. David Jones, along with the legal person's driving license. I, the man, David the Jones family, will be appearing to settle this matter as principal creditor, creditor and authorised representative of, all capitalised, Mr. David Jones. I would like some courtesy when I attend, as the last time I was forcibly removed out of court by two gas fitters, <laughs> at, my, at my last appearance. I am not the property. This is where I think this talk tonight has come in. Mm. Right? I think this is 
this letter is done what it did. I am not the property, serf or slave, of the corporation known as the United Kingdom, PLC or capital, or the United Kingdom Lower Capital uh, Limited or any other corporation. I, when at the hearing on the 9th of October, retain all my human rights in whichever convention or declaration they appear, along with all my inalienable rights and my God-given rights as a man, these rights are not negotiable and I may require an, an interpreter at the hearing. Now, I was waiting for them to get in touch with me, say, what, what language do you want in And I would have said, I would have said legalese, a business expert in business language and also an expert in Masonic language. <laughs> that's, that's what I would have said, right? At arms then, not a sort of without ill will, without vexation, non frivolous. So I said that on Tuesday. On Friday, I got disclosure of unused material, which was packed that thick of all the things I'd sent to them, all the things they sent to me, all the evidence that they've got, you know, the camera and statements. Uh, did I tell you about the sergeant who came to the house? No. no. The sergeant came to the house to deliver the letter, and he yeah, said, he Are you Mr. Dave Jones? And I said, is that a statement or a request? And he said, are you Mr. Dave Jones? And I said, no, he's upstairs in the drawer. Would you like me to go and get him? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> true, all this is true. And I said, yeah, it will be a long day. I said, what are you here for? He said, well, I've got this... Um, document I've got to serve to uh, Mr. David Jones but, and he said um, uh, that looks like you and he had the post photograph that looked like me and me car. Actually going. <laughs> I was actually because I, I realised you know so and uh, mobile camera it was you know and um, he said, well, that looks like you. I said, well, it does look like me, but it can't possibly be me. He said, why? I said, because I'm standing in front of you now. It can't be me. You know, anyway, God, it, it's getting harder. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm happy to accept those documents on the understanding that you understand that I am not a legal fiction or a person. I am a man. Right? Okay, do you understand that, that I'm a man? Yeah. So I'm not a legal fiction, am I? No. <coughs> he said, I said, well, I'm happy to accept that on behalf of my legal person. He said, okay, will you sign there? I said, I'm signing nothing. I'm no, signing no. nothing. No, 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 no. Right. I'm going to go, sadly, to, uh, to a statement of his, right, which, sadly, our policemen are corrupt. Well, there's no names getting mentioned, is there? <clears throat> In fact, you might want to cut that off now. So, I got that whole load of letters on Friday. And then on Saturday, I got the statement from Veronica already. She posted it off. Uh, witness statement of what happened in the court um, in September and I got a, another letter off the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service I assume to be and it said notice of discontinuance. Now bear in mind that the original offence was alleged speeding in the hills in North Wales and because they weren't furnished with the driver details it had been escalated to an offence more severe i.e. carrying six points and a thousand pounds and the notice of discontinuance goes on to say we have come to this decision because we do there is not enough evidence 
and we do not see a realistic outcome of a prosecution or a conviction based on the evidence that they've got. Based on the evidence that they've got, there is not a realistic possibility of a conviction. And that is, as I say, the charge was a failure to give driver details. Can you cut it off now? Because this is this is uh, relevant.